Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and today I'm going to show you how I made this little lop-eared bunny. I made her about gosh, I think it was 11 or 12 years ago, a really long time ago. I don't have her right now. I'm just showing the picture because I, I don't actually have the real bunny. I, I gave her away. Now, I, I really wanted to create a brand new project for Easter, but I sort of got sidetracked <laughs> because I ordered some baby chicks and they're coming really soon and I have a whole lot of stuff I have to do to get ready for them including making a brooder, uh, designing a new uh, chicken coop and you know the, all the things that are involved with turning a a regular town lot into a farm. So I didn't have time to make you a brand new uh, project. So you're going to be seeing in this video just still photographs that I took back 11 or 12 years ago because I didn't have a video camera yet. But I do have to say that this little bunny is actually one of my favorite sculptures that I've ever made. She's just really darling and it was really easy to make. The nice thing about it right now is that you don't have to run out and buy anything. You're just using recycled paper that you already have and some flour and water paste and you can paint it with whatever colors of paint you happen to have already in the house you don't need to run out and buy something now i did use some drywall junk compound to smooth off the paper mache after it was dry but if you don't have any drywall junk compound in the house don't worry about it. you don't have to run out and get some and because i only used two layers of paper mache on there i dried it in the oven at the lowest setting so it dried really quickly and so it should be possible to create this bunny in let's say an afternoon if you really really push it so it's a real fast it's really fun it's uh, the same technique that i used for years before i came up with a pattern and a paper mache clay and it still works so let's go ahead and get started here i want to show you how she was done really really easy now the first thing you do is just wad up some newspaper into a ball. This is going to be the body of your rabbit, so how big you make this ball is going to be how big your rabbit is. So go ahead and just grab some newspaper, crumple it all up, and cover it with masking tape. Then you want to add some legs and a tail. The front legs are just rolls of scrunched up paper. You put a little bit of a bend right at the bottom going forward so that you have some little feet for your rabbit. And of course the back legs do have the, the hips and the knees so you want to make a wide section up at the top. You don't have to get carried away with any kind of details on a rabbit because they're covered with fur and almost any de detail is all covered up anyway. So they're really easy to sculpt. Now that you have the legs on there, make sure that you, you, he's sitting down properly. Kind of just kind of move things around a little bit until it's sitting down the way you want it to on the table. And then you can add another ball for the head. You don't have to worry about the neck on a rabbit. You can't see it. And then you need to cut out some ears. Just go ahead and draw the ears out on a piece of very light cardboard. Use some cardboard from a cereal box. That's, that's really the perfect uh, weight. The, I could have made them a lot longer than I did. Uh, in fact, if I did it again, I probably would. <laughs> but you can go ahead and decide how long you want your rabbit's ears to be. You can also make your rabbit's ears go straight up. And if you do make them go straight up, you can put them at different angles to indicate the rabbit's expression. I put tabs at the bottom of the ears just to make it really easy to tape them on. And then because I was doing a lop ear rabbit, I did put a, just a small bump of paper right at the very top of the ears just to give them a nice uh, rounded shape. It makes it a little bit more natural when the ears are flopping down like that. You won't have to do that obviously if you make your rabbit's ears go straight up. Now for some reason, I don't know why I did this, it was been a long time ago so I cannot remember, but I added two layers of paper mache, just paper strips and paste, and for some reason, like I said, I don't know why, but I put the paper mache over my rabbit before I added the facial features or the toes. I wouldn't do that now, I don't know why I did it then, <laughs> but it worked so I mean, it's okay. You do it either way you want to do it. I used one ply paper towels dipped in the paste to make the features for the, the face and the toes. And I liked doing that because the paper towels are softer so it's a little bit easier to form those really small features on the face than it would have been if I was trying to fold up pieces of, of newspaper and, get, and, and try to get the same look. It was also a little bit easier to get a nice rounded shape with the paper towels but the paper towels do hold on to moisture 
really good. That's what they're for. And so it took a little bit longer to dry. Now, once everything is dry, I did use some drywall joint compound. I put it on very, very thinly and let it dry. At that time, I was still sanding uh, drywall joint compound. I never do that now. I would use a, a very lightly damp sponge, just smooth it off. I've got a whole video on, that shows you how to do that. Or if you don't have any joint compound in the house, just totally skip that part. And then you get to paint your rabbit. You're all ready. It, it, it really goes that quickly. Uh, I used a nice warm white white acrylic paint with some yellow ochre or some Naples yellow and that'll warm it up really nicely. Once that white is dry you can make the spots. Um, I started out with the brown spots which were made with a, a mixture of burnt sienna, burnt umber, and water. I thinned out my acrylic paint quite a lot for the spots because I wanted the white to come through and then I mixed some black with some waters to make that thinned out and transparent and I put that over the parts of the face and over parts of the spots. So I ended up with kind of a calico rabbit. I was using a photograph that I found online and you can find tons of them. Uh, just go ahead and, and pick whichever rabbit you like and paint yours to match uh, the one that you like. So now she's all done. I would recommend that you give her maybe a day or two to dry completely and just let the acrylic paint cure entirely and then give it at least one coat of acrylic varnish and then you'll be able to um, save her for a very long time. She should last actually for years. I do hope you make one of these and if you do come back and, and show it off on the Daily Sculptors page on my website. I know a whole lot of people who would really love to see how it came out. Also, while you're on the Daily Sculptors page, I hope you see all of the other really cool projects that other people have completed and are showing off. Um, I think they're just fantastic. People come up with the most amazing things, and I just love seeing what people make. So go make something, and then come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.